Honeybees are social creatures that live in a highly complex society. At the heart of the colony is the honeybee queen, who lays thousands of eggs every single day to maintain a healthy population of honeybee workers responsible for various tasks crucial for the colony's survival. If something goes wrong with the queen, the colony is for sure in big trouble. Therefore, the process of generating a new queen is vital for the colony's health and future. In today's video, we will explore a scientific experiment demonstrating that there is an invisible enemy of honeybees affecting the majority of honeybee colonies worldwide. It is well known that stressful conditions during early life stages play a critical role in determining long-term health and disease susceptibility. In a healthy honeybee colony, queens are the only reproductive female. Therefore, the formation of a new queen is one of the most crucial events for the success of the colony. To generate a new honeybee queen, worker bees must feed new larvae with glandular secretions in the form of a highly nutritious bee product known as royal jelly. Therefore, the formation of royal jelly is crucial for the survival of the honeybee queen and colony as a whole. Beekeepers are constantly reporting problems with their queens, even though everything seems to be visually okay most of the time. Many beekeepers believe pesticides are the one to blame based on their personal experiences and observations. It is a hard call. The US EPA's risk assessment guideline indicate that pesticide exposure in royal jelly is approximately a hundred times lower compared to pollen and nectar. It is incredible that honeybee workers are able to filter all the pesticides that are exposed in the field to produce royal jelly almost free of contaminants to feed their honeybee queens. But is that a good argument in favor of pesticide use? Beekeepers who believe that queen problems stem from pesticide exposure are often dismissed by pesticide companies. Researchers and pesticide companies know from previous studies that pesticide exposure has a deleterious impact on nurse bees' secretory glands and also alters hypopharyngeal glands physiology, which are responsible for the production of royal jelly. That led researchers from Oregon and North Carolina to hypothesize that honeybee workers' exposure to pesticides could impact the production and nutritional composition of royal jelly, which could finally explain what beekeepers already know from experience, that yes, pesticide exposure also hurt honeybee queens. Let me show you what the researchers did and the results they got. To simulate a multi-pesticide contamination in pollen, the researchers mixed pollen with two miticides, two fungicides, two herbicides, and three insecticides to match concentrations normally found in the field. Then, they fed a group of honeybee colonies with pollen patties containing pesticides and another group of honeybee colonies with pesticide-free pollen patties. They monitored the consumption of the patties for 46 days to ensure that honeybee nurses would be reared while exposed to the pollen treatment. Afterwards, they grafted larvae and raised queens in these colonies to collect royal jelly for analysis. When considering the total mass of royal jelly produced, it may appear that colony exposed to pesticides produce less royal jelly. However, this reduction was not statistically significant. When they looked at phytosterol concentration, an important micronutrient that is essential for the production of insect mounting hormones and cellular membrane integrity, the researchers found two distinctive clusters between these two groups, showing how different they are. More interestingly, when they separate the groups based on the amount of royal jelly produced, the healthy queen cells with lots of royal jelly clusters far away from the rest of the other groups where the production was subnormal, with several sterols showing statistically significant differences. For some of the compounds, such as desmosterol and beta-cytosterol, the pesticide effect was so intense that they could not even be detected in the samples. Similar results were found when researchers looked at protein content, 
also showing a clear difference in the concentration of proteins found in the controls with no pesticides and the treatment groups containing pesticides. Another result demonstrating the strong effect that pesticides have on the production of royal jelly comes to the surface when the researchers look at the total metabolites. Metabolites are substances produced during metabolism, for example digestion or any other chemical process in the honeybee's body, and they are great indicators of potential health problems. And once again, the control and pesticide groups clustered separately demonstrating the differing metabolism of the bees exposed to pesticides. And now you have, my friends. This study shows that pesticide exposure can have a substantial impact in the nutritional composition of royal jelly, and as a result can of course influence queen development. And as you can probably predict yourself, Honeybee queens with development problems may result in all kinds of problems for the whole colony moving forward. Even more, the absence of pesticides residues in royal jelly show an indirect mechanism by which pesticides influence honeybee development. That's the way it works. The honeybee workers go outside to collect pollen and nectar full of pesticides. Very hard to find places today that is pesticides free. Then. The exposure compromised the hypopharyngeal glands, leading to the production of very bad royal jelly, affecting the development of the new queens in the colony. I don't know about you, but to me, this is a recipe for a disaster. Experienced beekeepers have been complaining for many years about unusual issues in their apiaries. And I saw it myself when I worked at the University of Florida with commercial beekeepers for three years. It is a shit show. However, pesticide companies constantly shift the blame towards other problems such as varroa and viruses. And yes, varroa and viruses are indeed a significant issue. However, pesticides also play a gigantic role in the challenges faced by beekeepers. The situations surrounding pesticide cases are never straightforward and very difficult to analyze, so a lot of people, even researchers, kind of avoid them. I'll be focusing part of my work here in this channel to illustrate my point. So if you like this video and want to see more of it, please subscribe so I can keep going. I would like to express my gratitude to Dr. David Torpy, the last author of this publication, for making this pesticide article available as an open access. I believe that many people are unaware of the extensive amount of data we have on pesticides and the various issues they can cause mainly due to the fact that much of this data is locked behind paywalls. Thanks for watching. Inside the Hive.tv, the show of obese. See you guys next week.